can't find any different resolutions or full screen, so. All of his co-workers were gone. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. <laughs> now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some okay. hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Four one seven. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door four three seven. Four three seven. What's that in this area? Uh, four three seven. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. 415. There. Now, back to door number 437. 437. Um. I don't even know I'm walking now. Four, three, seven. Ah, oh, come on, mate. It's easy. Four, three, seven, there. Let's see. How about you click on? Well, I don't know. The copy machine. <laughs> All right. Back to room four one seven. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Ah, oh, he's so. <laughs> four one seven. He's saying. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. <laughs> you kidding me? Glad no one's here because the boss was here. Um. Wait, what did he say? I just jump on any. remember what he said. When Stanley came to a I set know. of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, shut up. Okay. This was Bye. not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Shut up. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Shut up. Oh, ah, such a... yes, truly a room worth admiring. Yeah. It had okay. really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I know you can get an achievement. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been... But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. No one messes with the powerful Stanley. Can't speed up. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. No. No. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Doing it for the, the you do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Shut up. Broom closet. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom uh. closet ending was my favourite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Broom closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping in. Yes. Right. Ending number one. Or oh, alternative ending. This is the uh, escape pod ending. This is the escape pod ending, so please, please just sit down and relax while I walk down to the main office entrance. I know I didn't get the blue, blue broom closet ending, but... Now look, my door's open. There we go. Loading. We are now leaving. Escape pod then.
That's the skate pod ending. So that was the escape pod ending. Now I'm going to do the alternative ending. I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Can't go in now. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing jump. through papers on the boss's <laughs> desk, pulling jump. books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to import wow. the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. manager would kill me. I'm pretty sure the manager would kill me if you found me down here. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now? when for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. The Stanley walked straight ahead control. through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. That's another ending that kills you. You know what, I'm going to do that other ending first. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. was inched closer what? and closer to his demise, what? it reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know oh my the God, story, God, that. forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. What? 
Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, what? as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral that? instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. What? Do you hear that? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going what? to accomplish? Oh my gosh! When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Liar. <clears throat> yeah, the, the the narrator's voice is now female. Hey, look, it's, it's a computer. Okay, nature paint. Okay, I'm gonna restart, begin the game again. Right, I've done that Easter egg. sitting there, Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm definitely not Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Two, eight, the moment four, five, he entered his manager's right. office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. <laughs> Feeling soothed, and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous Whoa. room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Jumped to life, their true nature revealed. 
Each board the number seven. of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers, the lives seven. of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. You would have jumped down there, you'd probably die. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert it. We did it. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the wow. new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Okay, now. There are more endings than that. All of his co-workers were go- Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say, That's the door after Ryan's recognition. Hmm, I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not pushing that. I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment. The winning of it all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 417, right? Door 437. Door 437. Door 437. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's get it 10 clicks or so. Four. Now, back to door number 437. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left.
Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling that. I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see true hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Now door 415, let's get it 10 clicks or so. Ten clicks, Now back to door number 437. Let's see, how about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right, back to room 417, I'm really feeling it now, I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, now they'll climb on employee 419's desk. 419. Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I just shot over a dispute with the co-worker. Let it, let it ball up inside you. Take it, okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Huh? And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? What? All because he believed Happening. everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously <laughs> out of existence in a single moment for it's no repeating. reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled, I'm this dreaming. is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have I'm finally dreaming. found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above Whoa. the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? I now the voice why. was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. 
How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. What? Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. What? Wow. Nothing. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. He's dead? But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, wow. and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. That's insane. If I was to have spotted that body, I would have called the ambulance. Are you insane? Huh? Let's get to the floor. <laughs> but Stanley simply couldn't handle uh, the what pressure. The hell what if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had what never been trained for that. Then? No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Huh? What? Here it comes. Here it comes. And then, just silence. That is pretty awkward. I didn't know. Was open again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I know there's an Easter egg here, but where isn't anything actually. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, Stanley and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Fine. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Hey. No, Stanley goes back. Damn it. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I've got the feeling money's for stealing, but not your, not you, of course, saying that. No. Guys, if you know what that says at the bottom. Oh, that's a lovely purse, sorry. Never mind. Hold up. <laughs> I just want to read Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. <laughs> Oh, 
oh, Stanley enters the room, blah, blah, blah. You know, he presses the buttons and... I know one more ending. Oh, no. And I'll get another, I'll smack another part out, I know. Whenever I feel like to. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Four two seven there. There's the old office. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Okay. There was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labelled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its... Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go. Turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. What? You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. He was Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. 
I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh, dear me. What's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> right. Look at that great back. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or Ten, it's all the same nine, to me, all a part eight, of the joke. Seven, and believe me, six, I will be laughing at every five, second of your inevitable four, life from the moment three, we fade two, in one, until the moment three, I say happily ever up. One, zero, gone. We're history. And that's the last ending I know, so. Well, I know there's the window ending, but I just can't seem to trigger it. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I will be doing more, so, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, give it a thumbs up, please comment down below and say what I was doing wrong to you. All of his co-workers were gone, okay. what could it mean? A trial. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room, yeah. perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, yeah, he couldn't button. find a trace of his co-workers. Please like and subscribe and share with a friend if you enjoyed this. So, that being said, bye.